Hey guys, today we're going to start with um, essentially what is chapter one for us. Um, you guys aren't following along specifically in um, a textbook, but this is where we're going to begin by talking um, about the history of package design. And there's been lots of changes, as you'll notice, um, not only in technology, but how we as a society um, think about package design. So if we look at where this all started, um, the idea of packaging and transporting items um, has been around since the 12th and 13th century. So as early as the 12th century, um, goods were being um, transported longer distances. So this brought about the need for vessels and packages to protect and house the items that people were trading. Um, so during this time, things like perfume, spices, wine, precious metals, textiles, um, coffee, and tea. And you know, what were those vessels? What were the items they were using to transport packages? So first of all, we think about the trade, right? If we think Back historically, we're referring to trade between between Europe and the Middle East. Um, we need packaging to protect. We also need packaging to identify and distinguish from other packages, so from different ports or different areas, like where something came from, where it originated from. So early packaging um, dates back to the use of things like hollow gourds. Um, animal bladders were used for glass bottles because the membrane provided the protection um, to house liquid. And then we think of animal skins and leaves were things like paper bags and plastic wrap. So people were working with goods and items that they had to transport and protect, um, you know, coffee, spices, tea, the things we mentioned in the previous slide. So growth of the trade, 12th, 13th century, um, transporting um, those goods. And then we get to, um, and obviously we're kind of making big jumps here, but I just want to hit the highlights with you guys. Um, emerging technology, you know, the 15th to 16th century, we're all very familiar um, about the historical significance of the printing press and that affected packaging. Um, so with the emerging technology and communication, we have, you know, mass production of printed materials thanks to the Gutenberg printing printing press. So again, you'll notice in the illustration here, these printing presses were still operated by hand. So they're not mechanized yet. So when we talk about printing, I mean, yes, that using this printing press was still better than doing things super manually, but there's still major um, hands-on labor at play here during this time period. And then we move to still in the 15th to 16th that 15th to 16th century, we move to thinking about, um, you know, how we signify items. And a fellow by the name of Andres Bernhardt, he was a German paper mill owner. Um, he was the first to print his name with essentially a logo, um, or what they called a logo during that time, on paper wrappers um, to package products. So this became, at its earliest point, advertising became a vehicle for consumer products. So we see this idea of advertising and marking a product as early as the 15th century. So what did that look like? We think of early commercial expansion. Um, jumping to a little, little bit further to the 18th century, um, commerce expanded due to rapid growth of cities. Um, people had jobs and money. They were able to afford goods. Um, we get a little bit more of mass production, mass marketing, allowed for low cost, readily available goods. So still producing things by hand, but we can do it faster because we have technology that assists us. And then thinking about um, what was going on in America in the 1740s, British, the British colony imported luxury goods from Europe. So thinking about the idea of luxury go goods, thinking about the idea of marking items, if you take a look here, um, this is actually a package for stomach bitters, which is essentially for, you know, if you had an upset stomach, um, you could take this and it helps um, it help with digestion. So just looking at, you know, we're using black ink, but we have these beautifully printed and we're clearly marking the name name and the company that is producing these. So this is the first um, first kind of package logo, um, if you will, that where people were starting to do things to distinguish themselves in the market. OK, 
okay? So think about today we have, you know, um, Kellogg's and Post Cereal, right? Um, you know, they obviously distinguish themselves differently in the market and by their printed products. But this was the first time that people were starting to realize that distinguishing where your product came from and who your product was made by was important for marketing purposes. So again, talking about the advertising and the marketing, still in the 18th century, packages and labels were produced so consumers would know the purpose of the product. Um, thinking about these items were toiletries, uh, bottled beer, antidotes, um, snuff, so snuff, dip, canned bottled fruits, or canned and bottled fruits, tobacco, teas, and powders. And then, you know, we, we don't think about plumbing but plumbing was a huge deal back then and with the invention of the toilet and the bathroom and the home um, hygiene became a priority um, so people started realizing oh I need these hygiene items so that spurred the need for these goods and to your right here you will see um, champion American soap powder um, so to wash your clothes with um, you will see a little advertisement and these women who were in the home who were obviously at that time responsible for the laundry um, are advertising to each other so that is a historic um, old illustrated advertisement <clears throat> Moving towards, again, we're still in the 18th century, but we think about um, attracting those customers, distinguishing the goods. To attract wealthy consumers, coats of arms, which were crests and shields, um, started being used more prevalently as graphic elements. So these ornate designs that signified the family, so it started becoming a heritage thing, signified the family that manufactured the goods in that regional market. So this is an example of this coat of arms here, and then we've got the, the family's name, and then we've got this lovely, beautifully ornate printed label. So let's take a closer look at that. Here's some other examples. So again, thinking about, you know, think about royal times, heraldy, right? Um, the coats of arms are very important. Um, they were very important in this aspect too because they signified who made the product. So labels often depicted powerful animals. Think of lions, unicorns, yes, unicorns, <laughs> and dragons. So, you know, these powerful animals. So this visually communicated, it was a social status thing, the nobility, the influence, the rank, the geographical origin, the tradition, right? So if we think of that social status, you know, we see that in brands today, right? Think of your higher end, um, not necessarily packaging, but think of your higher end um, auto brands, you know, Lincoln, Lexus, right? Um, even though Lincoln is a Ford product, it's very well known that it's the higher end. So signifying, um, you know, that this is a little bit more higher end than other products that you would get, which also at this time period meant that only wealthy people could afford these products. So even as early as the 18th century, brands were, and Brands and packaging were a status symbol. All right, so we're going to stop there, you guys, and we'll come back to, um, we'll continue with the 18th century um, and talk about printing processes. Um, I want to make sure that, that these videos aren't too terribly long. Um, we'll break, and in the next video, we'll pick up with this section.